A couple of months ago, I sat down and I started thinking about what was coming from tax policy. And here's what we know. Stock prices are determined by supply and demand. That's all this is. If more people are willing to pay a higher price, prices go up. People who are willing to take less, prices go down. The after-tax rate of return is key when someone's making an investment decision because you spend after-tax dollars. Higher income traders really determine the marginal prices of stocks because they own more stocks than do other people. Now, if we take a look at tax changes that are coming written into law, right now the capital gains tax in this country is 15%. If you're at the top of the income heap, you have a capital gain in a stock, you sell it, you pay 15%. On January 1st, that is going to go to 23.8%. That is current law, all right? That is an almost 60% increase. We hear a lot about the Buffett rule. Oh, the rich just got to pay their fair share, right? Everybody should be paying 30%. Understand, that is going to be a doubling of the capital gains rate. What that means is that people will pay less money for stocks. Yes, it will affect the rich, but it will affect everyone because it will, by necessity, drive the price of stocks down. The dividend tax is worse. Right now, people pay 15%. The top people after the first of the year will pay 43.4%. People will not be able to pay the same price today they pay for stocks once these tax changes go into effect. So what does all this mean? We take the following assumptions. Let's say, and I did this analysis on April 20th of 2012, let's assume that you bought 2,000 shares of McDonald's five years earlier on the, the 20th of, and it's kind of ironic being on 420, eating McDonald's, at any rate for my hip, for my hip listeners, 420, you paid $48.36. That same stock, five years later, was selling for $95.94. So you made, basically, you doubled your money in five years. Pretty cool stuff. The dividend currently is 70 cents a quarter, which is $2.80 per year. If we take a look at what now happens to the value of this stock when we have these tax changes, again, which are coming on January 1st of next year, or if we have the Buffett rule, what happens to the value of McDonald's stock? All right, if we sell the stock on the 31st of December of this year, we have a $95,000 gain if, if McDonald's price stays the same between now and then. And same thing's true if you hold it another day or if we get the Buffett rule. However, you'll pay significantly more in tax if you hold it till January 1st. Holding it one more day is going to cost you about $8,000. Now, let me ask this question. How many smart people are going to hold the stock one more day versus selling it here? With the qualifier smart people, the answer becomes zero. Okay, that's not going to happen. You have the Buffett rule because we want to be fair. All right, everybody should be paying 30% tax, right? Okay, now all of a sudden it's going to cost me another 14 grand. And my after tax gain obviously goes down the same amount. I'm in the whole four, eight grand or 14 grand. What this means per share, if I wanted to have the same rate of return over five years, the value of McDonald's stock would have had to come down originally by about $4.18. If I have the Buffett rule, it's about $7.14. What this really tells us is, is the impact on McDonald's stock. On the tax, on capital gains, McDonald's stock will have to go down the equivalent of about 9%. If we look at it with the Buffett rule, it has to come down about 15%. That's the good news. The dividend tax is significantly worse. And if the stock price stays the same, basically the stock, instead of being at 96, would be at about 88 or 82. All right. During this time, you get 5,600 bucks a year on your 2,000 shares in dividends. The tax on that currently is 840 bucks. After the first of the year, if you're in the top marginal bracket, that kicks it to 2430. That means after tax, instead of getting to keep about 4,700 bucks, you're getting to keep about 3,200 bucks. It cost you about $1,600, which means instead of getting a 2.5% rate of return on your money, you're getting about a 1.7% return on your money. The question is, if I would have been happy with a 1.7% return, I would have been willing to pay more for McDonald's stock, or I would have put my money somewhere else. Because I am not, if I want to be able to get 2.5% on my money, I will not pay $96 a share for McDonald's stock. I will not pay, in fact, more than about $64 per share. What you find out is mathematically, for all of this stuff to remain equivalent, 
when we have the tax increase on January 1st, the price of stocks probably have to drop at least somewhere between 20 and 30 percent. And that is something I think that is likely if we do not change tax policy. I also believe it is unlikely we will change tax policy before then. We'll talk about that. Do I think this is going to happen? Yeah, I think it's almost absolute. There won't be a deal before the election. It's almost certain. Why? If you think about it from this perspective, these are taxes that affect the rich. Now, the reality is that they affect all stock prices because, again, stock prices are effectively marginally set by the rich because the rich buy a lot more stocks. Before the election, what are the chances, and this is not a political statement, I believe both political parties have failed us, I believe they will continue to fail us, but what do you think the chances are that Barack Obama is going to sign legislation that's going to extend tax cuts for the rich? Okay, I think it's not going to happen, and even if he was willing to go along with it, the Senate's not going to go along with it. It's not going to happen. After the inauguration, what incentive, if Obama wins, what incentive does he have to cut those taxes? on the rich. Really none. He's already won, right? If Romney wins, he's already come out and said, I don't think we should cut a deal before inauguration because why cut a deal with Obama when you cut a deal with me? We're going to end up with better tax policy. So what this means is before inauguration, it's very unlikely that we're going to have a change in tax policy. So again, he's not going to cut for the rich. It's going to affect everyone. Even if the Republicans get something passed, they can't override his veto. He would veto it. After inauguration, again, I don't think Obama cuts it. And here's the thing with Romney. He has said that I don't think that the capital, there should be any capital gains or dividend taxes on people making less than $200,000 a year. The question is, is what does he think that rate should be for people over $200,000 a year? The narrative on Romney in the media is going to be he's rich and he only cares about rich people. If the first thing he does when he gets into office is cut taxes for the rich, he's going to get massacred. That theme is going to be out there on him. And I think he's going to be very leery of that. Now, the Senate may step up if the Republicans keep control or take control. They may pass it. He may then sign it. But the Republicans are unlikely to have 60 votes and push that thing through. What does all this mean? What it means is I think that certainly before the inauguration, you're not going to have the tax rates change. You're going to have the increases that are planned. After inauguration, I think actually you may keep these taxes for a while. So does that mean the market's going to crash on January 1st? No, because smart people are going to go, I'm not going to sell on January 1st, I'm going to sell on December 31st. And when people realize that everybody's going to sell on December 31st, you go, well, I'm not going to wait till everybody else sells, I'm going to sell on December 30th. And well, I'm going to sell on December 29th. And what happens is, is once people price this into the market, it all comes out. Right now, the discussion you hear is there's a physical cliff coming. It's not just this. It's also the sequestration. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But people are talking about with what's going to happen with tax policy and what's going to happen with spending cuts, which I'm not going to argue right now, but it's all smoke and mirrors. But people are saying that this is going to take 3 to 4% out of gross domestic product next year. Now, given that gross domestic product is growing at about 2% a year, that's brutal. That's we're back into recession. Right now, what people are saying is this would be so horrible, there's no chance that it's going to happen. The reality is, is it's going to happen. And when people figure that out, that's when stock prices will start going down. I think you might start seeing some slow bleed in July and August. We've obviously got some bleeding going on right now. I think by September or October, this is ugly. Because the other thing that happens during this time frame is the debt ceiling debate will start up again that we are going to hit the debt ceiling again this year. The Federal Reserve said that they can play some games and they can keep it going through the election. But after that, that conversation is going to take place. If you remember last year when we had the debt ceiling debate, we had our credit rating downgraded, stock prices fell, everybody was in a tizzy. You're going to have that on top of this. I think it's ugly. If things are really horrible after the first of the year, you might have a retroactive cut. Maybe in March or April, stock market swooning, nothing else is working. Maybe they go back and do the tax cuts for the rich. If so, I think you're going to see a huge market run up. And this is why I go back to, I don't think this is all just doom and gloom. The reality is, is you're going to make more money here if this is correct and you're short than you will even in the run up. But there's going to be opportunities in both directions. And the key is to pay attention again to what the institutions and the smart money are doing.